Namaste. I am so glad to be with you for another edition of Live, Love, Engage. And I have a lovely person uh, who we are going to be chatting with today, who's someone I just met recently. And um, I had the pleasure to be interviewed by her. And now I'm turning the tables and getting to interview her. So I want to welcome Jennifer Regular to our show. Welcome, Jennifer. Oh, thank you so much, Gloria. I'm so great to be here. Oh, well, I'm delighted because we are, um, I think, kindred spirits a little bit. And, and I'm going to share with our audience just who you are and what you do. So they will they will learn about that and, uh, and we'll get into our discussion. So Jennifer is known as the soul illuminator, and she specializes in helping thought leaders and visionaries direct the life they live so they can create global impact make the impossible possible, and fulfill their life mission. She's also an international speaker and author of Embrace Your Power, A Healing Journey of Self-Discovery. And I like the title of that. I might have to ask you a little bit about that. Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. I'd love to know more about that. But I, I, I do always like to start, and I'm sorry for those of you watching me on YouTube today. I don't know. I've got this itchy nose for some reason. <laughs> I think that means something, but I'm not quite sure what it is. I know itchy palms are money. That, that usually works for me, but I'm not sure about the itchy nose, but I'll try not to do that anymore. Anyway, um, tell us a little bit about how you got started or, or, or just what is the path that has led you to where you are today and doing the type of work you're doing? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Well, one thing I can tell you for sure is that the path is not linear. <laughs> there are so many pivots and turns we take along the way. And that was so true for me. You know, growing up, I thought, you know, this would be forever. And I'm going to study this. And this is the job I'm going to have forever. I'm going to live in this house. And it'll be forever. And I'll have this love relationship. And oh, we're going to love each other forever. But forever isn't so real. Well, it's real as long as it lasts, right? Forever is just for as long as it lasts. And studying into other spiritualities and religions and learning a lot about impermanence really made a lot more sense than forever that we continue to evolve and we continue to learn and experience so many different things in this lifetime. And for myself, I ended up on so many different paths. I had 16 different jobs. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had five <laughs> different business ventures. But where it all started was when I was younger and came in late in life, actually. My mother didn't know she was having me until six months later. She oh, actually wow. thought she was going through menopause. <laughs> <laughs> And then she had hoped, you know, after three grown girls, basically, they were 14, 18, and 20 when I was being born, that um, I'd be a boy. And I wasn't. So, you know, learning that later just felt like it was always a disappointment or a burden or something that wasn't really wanted necessarily. And thinking that, I really tried to prove my worth and find out, well, why am I here? And what can I do to make up for being here? <laughs> because I didn't want to be a burden, you know. It's, and uh, I was just always trying to prove something or make my mother proud in some way, trying to meet society's expectations, being the teacher's pet, you know, always trying to have the right answer and participate and engage as fully as I can, even as shy and introverted as I was. I just wanted to prove that I was capable of something or that there was a reason to be here. But that really tripped me up, Gloria, trying to please others and want that need for approval and just trying to prove my worth or, you know, some purpose for being here. But there is a flip side of that, too, in that there is a purpose for me being here and that there is a path I'm meant to take. And I was born for a reason and learning that who I am made a difference. You know, it impacted the family in ways that were unexpected. And when I stopped trying to satisfy these expectations, I, I later realized didn't even exist. There was no pressure from my family to do any of these things. In fact, I was the only one in my family that even went to university. Like there was no high standards that I had to live up to. They were all self-imposed, all through beliefs that I had and these emotional attitudes that I had something to prove, you know, or I had to make my way in the world, so to speak. And all of that really coming from ego, a lot of ego grasping, you know, and 
And it's really ignorance, ignorance to who we truly are and the perfection that we already are. So I hear a lot of people talking about what sounds like imposter syndrome, you know, that maybe they're not good enough or they don't have what it takes or they don't have it all right yet and perfect yet. And what I learned is perfection actually repels people and it doesn't speak to who you truly are. So being able to claim our spiritual sovereignty is actually an antidote to that imposter syndrome. And then being able to leverage our skills and abilities along the way helps us to build that capacity, which it did for me to be able to explore other possibilities. So it wasn't that I didn't know what I was doing. I was just passionate about so many different things that it took me in many different directions. And when I was able to let go of those expectations of what society would impose as rules and expectations for how to live and how to control what we're meant to do or live up to expectations that maybe our parents had for us about, you know, my mom thought I'd be a great nurse and my dad thought I was most inclined to be a teacher. And then growing up, I thought, well, how can I merge that and yet make it my own so that it makes everybody happy, you know, and <laughs> that's how I lived my life. How do I make everybody happy? I had this kind of world view, community and belonging and always noticing the parts, um, the people in society that were alienated, isolated, ostracized, scapegoated. And I would always be drawn to them. You know, actually, you asked me a little bit about the book, how it intrigued you. That book was actually conceived when I was 10 years old and under a very different title. And it was because of the way I was seeing the world and seeing society was quite different from many of my peers, actually, and made me question a lot because of that. But I started writing it down. It became bones of a book called When Society Determines Your Destiny. Mm. And pretty grandiose for a 10 year old, you know, when you think back to it now, (laughs) but at the time, you know, I was all grown up and I was seeing the world that way. And um, so I was always drawn to the people where I felt were pulled down, broken down, beat up and told that they weren't worthy or when they tried to express their idea, their opinion being shut down for that. And I was always the one to listen and hear them and befriend them And that translated later, too, when I was working in social services for 25 years, again, in 16 different types of positions and different populations. So I had an exposure to a lot what creates barriers in people's lives and obstacles. But it always remained the same, you know, just wanting to make a difference in our life and wanting to be someone that is seen and heard and that had opinions and And so 30 years later, that book really became the true message, which was about embracing your power. And it's a healing journal, actually, of self-discovery. And it's a journaling style book to really tune into who we are, what we value, what we stand for, and to reclaim that spiritual sovereignty, which, again, is that antidote to the imposter syndrome. And what that means is remembering that we are spiritual beings having this human experience. And it's not just a cliche. I know many of you have probably heard this before, but it's really diving deep to understanding what that means and being able to leverage that, you know, realigning with what you value, understanding what that is and being able to move from a place of passion rather than obligation. See on that path, it became quite dense and created this fog And fog, you can see as fear, obligation, and guilt, the FOG, right? Mm -hmm. And that density of not being able to see through that and see clearly or even know what kind of direction to take. So how do we move through that? And so one of the things that really help people with is being able to move from passion rather than obligation as our main motivating factor to living our lives. And when we move from passion, Well, let me give you this example. When you break up the word, it's pass I on. Mm -hmm. And that I is your soul's expression. That's your spiritual sovereignty. That's the power that you are embracing and then passing that on. So this is something you get remembered for long after you leave this earth. This is the difference you make, that global impact that's made. And you make the impossible possible when you start to live up to your own ideas, 
beyond society's expectations, beyond authority. And when I started realizing that and letting go of authorities ruling my life, of course, there's still rules, you know, to follow the natural order of things. (laughs) However, when I really tapped into the higher authority, that higher self, Mm -hmm. the spiritual guidance, God, to be able to access that innate wisdom that we're already carrying. So there's nothing to strive for, truly. It's just leveraging what we already have and being able to thrive with that. And that's how we tap into our potency, tap into that I and build our capacity for living a life that explores many different possibilities, you know, to be able to follow society's rules and be able to determine our destiny and fulfill our whole reason for being here Mm. and discovering what that passion is, right? And then simplifying our life so that we can actually meet our goals. So when I talked about aligning with our values, Mm -hmm. that really supports us in simplifying our life because then we only choose to direct our time and energy into what's in alignment with those values. That's walking a path with integrity, right? And then having the autonomy, which is another one of my values Mm -hmm. in spirituality. So those are my top three autonomy, integrity and spirituality. So I make sure using myself as an example, that everything I say yes and no to is based on whether it supports and is aligned with those values. So that helps simplify my schedule and my time. And what I'm here to do get has a chance of being expressed. You know, something else that I've experienced throughout my life are many different types of loss, you know, of marriage and jobs and husband, health at times and um, bankruptcy. I had to claim that, you know, and what I learned through that actually is was all about forgiveness, Mm -hmm. debt forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Giving ourselves freedom from emotional attachments to those expectations and living up to standards that don't meet who we truly are and situations that we got ourselves into, but recognizing that we can always make new choices. And as we become more self-aware, then we become aware of what other choices are available to us, what other possibilities exist for us, and then being able to practice discernment so that we can take the highest path available to us. And so, you know, you can obviously see how passionate I am about this. Yeah. But I also mentioned about the losses I experienced. And there was there's a lot of um, insight and awakening, actually, that was gained through that. Because I got to hear what was remembered about the people who had passed. And recognizing how short life can be and recognizing that time is not a renewable resource. So how we can we best use that? you know, and and really getting down to what's important. And that can happen at any moment, you know, um, the transformational journey is really about that awareness, going through a rite of passage, right, where it's a big learning curve, you know, where we remember who we are, and then having that rebirth, you know, reemerging in the fullness of who we are, reemerging as our soul self, as our higher self, and being able to express that in the world. And so when we start moving from that higher guidance that I mentioned, instead of society's expectations or authority guiding us, but to be guided by our inner guidance, then we free our spirit to direct the life that we're meant to live. Mm -hmm. And we're able to activate our soul's calling by taking inspired action. Mm So again, living from that place, moving through that place, stepping forward from that place of passion rather than obligation. Mm. Well, (laughs) Um, so much going on there. And I thank you for sharing all all of that wonderful information. And and I can relate to you even even more and and a few things that you talked about as well, because I realized that I, I... was very similar in the way I was at school. And then I was always, you know, raising my hand and striving to be good and, and, and participate and, and all of that because of the same types of things that I wasn't, you know, really feeling, feeling worthy. And, and so I, I'm so glad that you 
brought this up and to be able to explain it. And, and I love, I love the passion. I love how you, you explain what that, how, how that is to be able to pass, pass it on, I think is really um, inspired. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. it was. It didn't come from me. It came from spirit. <laughs> so I want to ask you, um, how could someone that wants to do this, this, what you've been talking about so far today, how could they possibly get it wrong? How could they get it wrong? Yeah. How to get what wrong? Um, well, to be able to, I guess, when you were talking about, um, you know, really leaning into like their, um, their knowingness, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. finding out about that and, and starting to really tap into that as opposed to what society wants them to do necessarily. So is there, is, is there, is there a way that they could get that wrong? Yes, absolutely. One thing is simply claiming your spiritual sovereignty, really recognizing that you are a spiritual being, because by doing that, you're accepting the fullness of who you are and trusting that you are capable of this human experience that we came down here to have, right? And so given that, you have all the tools within you already. So it's just a matter of being able to access that. So what I hear some of my clients talk about in our sessions is that they appreciate the opportunity for healing. Mm. And healing is really just coming back into alignment, coming back into wholeness, rebalancing. It's rebalancing back to what's really important and those values that I mentioned earlier. And then they also offer like that there's an opportunity for self-empowerment. So that's, you know, what I spoke about with the book about embracing your power. So the power to choose, to make conscious choices, to decide how you want to be living your life. And more importantly, how you want to be showing up for your life, how you want to be. And there's a lot of soul care practices and self-care practice that support us being the full sense of who we are, right? But what I also hear from clients is that how we can break through those emotional attitudes and beliefs that are limiting us and hindering our connection with a higher path, with our higher wisdom, with our higher power, to be able to tune into that is really about turning inward, turning back in. So I like when we think about going to sleep, about turning in. Hmm. And when we turn in, we also get to tune in and listen to our soul's wisdom. And I love acronyms. <laughs> and it really helps us restore our faith when we turn it, turn in and tune in. It restores our faith and faith being an acronym for finding answers in the heart. Mm, I like that. Yeah. And that's where, Gloria, our answers are. It's all in there. And so we never get anything wrong. It's always an experience. And if something feels wrong or didn't feel pleasant or we made a decision that didn't turn out so well, <laughs> you know, um, something that I've often asked myself in those situations is what's the deeper truth hidden in this? Mm -hmm. What is this showing me? Right. How is this guiding me to my true path and my true purpose? Right. And that can steer mm -hmm. us back into our direction that, creates that balance, that groundedness yeah. to be able to support us through that again. So really, um, you know, something else that I share too is about cope, coping. Mm -hmm. How do we cope? So how do you, how do you cope with anything that shows up? <laughs> well, C is for mm -hmm. conscious connection. Mm -hmm. And that for me is always paramount. That is the very first thing <laughs> because if anything's going wrong, it's because we're not, we've lost that connection, right? Things get distorted. Yep. Things aren't so clear. We unplug from our higher power and our higher self. And so plugging back into source, reconnecting, you know, so it's like a almost mm -hmm. like a restart on our computer even, right? And our mm -hmm. computer being our operating system of the physical body, our earth suit, putting that back on, getting back into that, reconnecting consciously with, okay, who am I? <laughs> Why am I here? What am I all about? And then taking a stand for that. 
And the O is for only temporary. To remember that no matter what we're going through, it's only temporary. I spoke about the difference between forever and impermanence. Right. <laughs> you know, things are always changing and evolving. And you know what? Who we were and how we lived our life up until this day, you know, we can take what we like and leave the rest because it starts now in this moment. This present moment is our entryway into our future. So we can always choose how to move forward now. Yeah. And then the P is to really practice patience because we're not going to get it overnight. That's why we're here to have this human experience <laughs> because we're learning, we're evolving, and we just want to be able to step on an evolutionary path that supports us, that nourishes us. And so that P for practice patience is really having self-compassion, mm -hmm. cutting yourself some slack, giving yourself time and opportunity to heal, giving yourself room to breathe and get centered again, right? And that E is to embrace your power, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? To so feel that empowerment, but E can also mean exit the situation. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a path or in a situation that's not supporting you, that's bringing you down more than lifting you up, then there's an opportunity to exit that situation. For me, it felt really impossible. Uh, my my life was threatened, my house was threatened, my job was threatened, everything was threatened. And it was like impossible. Like, I can't leave work, where am I going to have the money from? And if I leave my husband, where am I going to live? Like, everything seemed impossible at the time. Mm -hmm. And yet I took the one thing that was most important to me, which happened to be a picture of my dad, because he was a real source of strength and security for me. And then I and I, I just got out and got in my car, had no clue where I was going to go. It's just taking that first step and having the faith to take it, you know. And then I got to that stop sign. It's like, OK, now what? Where am I going to go? What direction do I take? And I couldn't decide. So I rolled it over to my higher, higher power and say, guide me, find me where I need to be doing what I need to be doing. And that enabled me to take the turn and the next turn, and to the next step. And so it's just recognizing, embracing your power to take that next step or exit the situation if you need to. But I also like E for energy hmm. because there's a lot that gets imprinted in our cellular memory. So when I spoke about healing, it's coming back into balance and integrating our energy with whatever we've experienced to what, a, what our future is as well. So it's a bridge of support to integrate our energy. And um, so energy treatments, if you get an opportunity to do that, is very helpful for restoring, you know, your sense of self, being able to heal that and move that because often we carry and take on a lot of energy from others that's not ours. And that can also be what can create doubt and confusion and that fog, right? The fear, obligation, and guilt. So energy work is also very important, I think, and is a great way to fine tune and be able to cope with anything. Yeah, that is for sure. And as you've been talking, what I keep coming back to, it was something you said at the beginning. And uh, I think your parents should be proud because you are, mm -hmm you have found a way to bring nursing and teaching together because uh, that you. is what you're doing <laughs> mm. clearly. So I don't know if you've realized that, but, but you are. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for yeah. recognizing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, what are you curious about right now? What am I curious about right now? I'm curious about the world that we're creating. <laughs> I'm curious about, you know, if people really understood that they had that creative power mm. and to create a vision even of the world that they want to be living, um, what they would then create. I'm curious about that. I'm curious about what people's vision is and how to uplift humanity and create an incredible world that we all want to be living in and how we can live in that together. I'm curious about people's thoughts about that. Hmm. Yeah. Well, what's your thought about it? I'd love to reawaken the wonder of life, you know, to be able to see as we did when we were children and still had that innocence about this whole world of exploration and possibilities and recognizing 
and coming back into connection, that conscious connection again with the sacredness of life. You know, so for me, it's really about being able to tap into or touch that sacredness mm -hmm. and have that reverence for life. That's really what speaks to my soul. But to reawaken that wonder so that we can experience more joy and line up with what's meaningful and to feel on purpose, mm -hmm. right? And to, yeah, really live our passion. So having that wonder, that joy, that passion. And then my ultimate vision, Gloria, is global coherence. Mm -hmm. Because if we're all singing our song that our heart wants to sing, then we can create that global coherence, mm -hmm. you know, and then we can create that allness with each one of us being a part of that melody. Mm, and so creating that harmony. Yeah. You need to be on the sing your heart song summit next time <laughs> oh i didn't know there was such a thing there was such a thing in fact i was i was uh, i was one of the speakers on it just recently and i will i will connect you because that was that was that's all about what it's about really oh it's thank you encouraging people to do that so um awesome. this has been awesome so far so i wanted to just because uh, we we're starting to near at the end but is there anything that I should have asked you, but haven't. Or any other last thing that you'd love to be able to leave people with something important that, you know, one big takeaway. One big takeaway is to free your spirit, to direct the life that you're meant to live and to follow the direction of your soul. Mm. Yes. Awesome. Well, if someone wants to connect with your soul, <laughs> let's say, <laughs> and, and they really, they really leaned into what you've been speaking today and, and, and said, Hmm, I need to connect with her. Uh, what is the best way that people can do that? Yeah. And I like that you said connect with my soul. Cause it's really the way I work is from a soul centered approach. You know, the, one of the reasons why I left social services, because I didn't want to do that role to roll away of connecting with people anymore. I wanted to connect soul to soul. Mm -hmm. And so I offer a half hour pathfinder session. Mm -hmm. And this is an intuitively guided session where we get to tap into your soul's guidance on the best direction for you to take now. Mm -hmm. So meeting where you're at now and where you can start moving forward on your highest path. So I offer that glory. It's a half hour pathfinder session and I mentioned before about what some clients have said, but really where I find the transformation happens is through presence. So that's why I'd, I'd prefer to meet one-on-one -on -one rather than have a download that you may or may not get to at some point, because to really have that impact and that change and transformation in your life, it happens when we meet and in that presence where you can really felt heard and be seen and be understood. And that's where the magic really happens. So I'd like to offer that for your audience. Okay, awesome. Um, do you happen to know the URL offhand where people can get yeah. that? Or, yeah, it's on my website. My website's okay. lightingthepath.ca. And if you do slash pathfinder, we'll get right to the page where you can sign up for one of those sessions. All right. Well, I will have that in the show notes though, as well, for those of you who may be listening somewhere where you don't have a pen handy, but I did, yes, I did want to get it just in case someone was listening and, and did have an, a way to be able to type it down. <laughs> yes. And the podcast that you were on to wise women Wednesdays and the wisdom speakers and seekers podcast links to that. You can also find on my website and you'll find many guests, including Gloria Grace Rand on there and many others who are really sharing their journey, their inspiration, their eye that they're passing on to wake up and change the world. So I encourage you to check that out too. All right. And, and I do encourage everyone out there as well to do that because yeah, Jennifer, you are lighting the path and, and I love that you are doing the work that you are doing in the world because it is so desperately needed and I'm sure that your vision is coming, coming to fruition. It is, it's, it, it may be slower than some people want, but you know what? Hey, slow and steady wins the race. So it, it's absolutely. Okay. Yes. And it's like Ram Das says, we're all just walking each other home. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yes. Mm. 
Oh, well, thank you for being with us today. I so appreciate you spending some time with us and I wish you continued success with all of your endeavors and, and to be able to continue doing the good work you're doing in the world. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I also want to thank all of you for watching and for listening. I do so appreciate you as well. And I encourage you to share this uh, episode if you found it of value today and share it with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed on Apple, make sure that you are doing that. Subscribe to the podcast or, or also check out my YouTube channel as well. You can subscribe there. It's at uh, Gloria Grace Rand. And you'll find all of the podcast episodes there as well. So until next time, as always, I encourage you to go out and live fully, love deeply, and engage authentically.